Well, today on Red Dog Bushcraft, the weather's not cooperating for an outside video, so I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Back after Christmas this past year, I picked up these binoculars from a local drugstore, and they had a display set up with items of 50% off. These binoculars, Yorkshire 7x50 binoculars, were $9.99, and they were listed as 50% off. Now I have a good set of binoculars for when I'm out in the field, but I've seen on multiple videos how people have taken binoculars and taken them apart and used the, the magnifying lens in there to start fires. And I would love to have a really good burning lens. So I thought we would take this, tear it apart, look at what I carry in my everyday carry bag, the type of stuff that I would have when I was out on a hunting or fishing trip and see if I can get the lens out of this without breaking it. Now we may start by just uh, disassembling this and taking it and uh, just working with half of it so that I can use the other half for another demonstration at another time. But uh, stay with me and I'll show you the steps as I progress along. <clears throat> Okay, first of all, there's a couple of visible screws here on each side of the eyepiece. There seems to be a cover right here where you do the focusing and the adjustment. Same on the other side. There's a small screw underneath this lens here. And we have some screws here. So let's take our multi-tool and see if we can remove these screws and see what kind of access we get. Okay, so we'll start by disassembling this side over here. This is the uh, Leatherman Wave, is what I'm using to disassemble this. I'll take one of these caps, set it here, and we'll put our parts in there. Uh, tight angle there. Tough getting in there. I don't know if this rubber. Well, looks like I just pulled that right out. So, all right, well, that took care of an eyepiece, and there looks to be a couple of lenses in there. That plastic broke off without a whole lot of effort at all. Hmm. We can probably just pull this back at this point, but we'll set this off to the side. And let's just see if this other side would break apart or come apart that easy. Also, this uh, may not be as complex as I was thinking. So we'll remove that screw. What does that do for us? Go to the flat side of the screwdriver here. Kind of pry that up a little bit all the way around. Looks like it's being held in place by this. And that looks like a plastic covering. It's just peeling up around the lens. So let's take our knife. See if we can cut that out of the way. Give us a relief cut on that side. Maybe another one there. And then we'll just skin it straight on down. Alright, remove that. Uh, that looks like some kind of a uh, Almost like that lens is screwed in there. This doesn't affect it any longer. Looks like it didn't to begin with. It only moves the binoculars in and out of the frames away from this outer eyepiece. So.
Okay, there is a rubber gasket in there. Or some type of a hard plastic. Oh, and that's the lens on the other side, that piece of hard plastic that I was pushing on. And I could hear the glass starting to crack. We did not want to do that or that grinding noise. Uh, I can't seem to push it one way or the other. Let me cut the camera off and fiddle with this for a minute and I'll bring you right back as soon as I figure out how this lens comes out. Okay, so actually after starting to pry on this base plate here, I found that this just screws off. Once that's off, that little base plate comes off and I don't see any type of lens. There is some type of a mirror or a piece of clear glass in here, but it it's kind of triangle shaped and I don't think that's what we're looking for. I think what we're looking for is here and in the eyepiece. So I can put my finger on the inside of it and I can feel the thickness of the glass. And this thing feels pretty thick. I'd say just by feel, maybe almost a quarter of an inch or so, at least three eighths I would say. And there's some grooves in this ring that sits in here and I can't tell if that's a way that that screws in and out of there or if it was glued in. But I'm gonna sit here and play with this for a minute and see if I can get it to turn. And if I figure out how to get this out, I'll bring you right back. Okay, so what I found are there are rings in here and it, there are a couple of little notches on a ring that surrounds the lens. And I think if I had taken my screwdriver and put it in there and worked it around, I could have probably have broken that and got it to, to screw out. But there's some glue or something in there and I've pried so much that I've actually chipped this little piece. So the threads are all messed up now. So the next attempt is gonna to be to take the saw on this multi-tool and I'm gonna to try to saw the sides of this thing and relieve the pressure and then pop it out. So we'll give that a shot, get this, this thing folded up, get the saw out, and just gently, I'm gonna just start cutting the top edge. And when I get down to glass, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna cut one on each side and see if I can open it up. And it is cutting it. Okay, just so you can see the process, I've already made three cuts here. So I'm gonna go straight across from this deepest one. And just wanna show you how easy this plastic is cutting with the saw and this multi-tool. I'm trying to hold it pretty level, but I'm letting it slope down, if at all, towards the back and not the front. That way I get a wider relief going back and I'm cutting till the point that it sounds like I'm hitting something really hard or it doesn't want to cut anymore and I think that's the small ring that's going around that lens in there and I'm there now can you hear that so that puts me two small cuts on each side and two larger cuts on each side We'll take the pliers and see if we can peel this thing back a little bit. If nothing else, maybe it'll break. Mm, that's some tough stuff. I was hoping it would just break right out. I can definitely see it prime. But there is a lot of resistance. And like I said, I don't want to break the glass. It's kind of the purpose of buying this thing was to try to get a decent lens out of it for starting fires. I uh, saw a video where Dave Canterbury on Wilderness Outfitters was showing his fire kit and I carry a magnifying lens uh, that is actually made as a burning lens starting fires and it's 7x 
but I also have a larger one that I bought at a Renaissance type event. And there it is. There's the lens setting in there. You can see it sets in between two grooves there. It's like a little channel that it looks like it was popped in from the top down. All right, let's continue to see if we can break that on out of there now. Oh yeah, there we go. And there's the end result. We got that one out. That's a nice size lens. I don't know exactly what the power of this lens would be in a pair of binoculars that's marked seven by 50, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be stronger than my seven X lens. And we still have the one in here to get out. As uh, soon as we can, the weather cooperates, we'll go outside in some sunshine and we'll see how it works. I'll continue and try to get this one out too. Okay, after seeing how the other end went together, I just started peeling this thing apart with the multi-tool and it feels loose now. I think we're really close. I'm going to bring you back. If I can get this last piece right here off. Oh, there we go. All right, so here. Oh, they have nothing. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's a cone in there separating two more pieces of glass. Okay, well, that's pretty small. Let me uh, get something to compare it by. The small one is about the size of the round area in my Leatherman Wave. I would say that's probably dime size. Uh, this one sitting on the Leatherman Wave, it's probably not very clear. It's as wide as my more knife grip in the center. Uh, I'll set them both on there. So I say probably quarter size dime size and of course the one we were actually after so that's uh that's what we wound up with i have no idea it is concaved quartered whatever they call that there's definitely some decent magnification in the small one um the large one well, I'm thinking that's probably 5X too. And this large one, uh, to tell you the truth, seems like it's the, it may be the least of the magnification of any of them, but it's so thick. I don't know. I don't know guys, the, uh, I don't know which one's gonna be better. One of the smaller ones or the big ones. But anyway, we found out that within just a few minutes, uh, we can tear these apart if you've got a good multi-tool. All right, so let's take a look right quick at what we got left. Now, that was using just the more knife and the uh, Leatherman Wave. Let's set that aside. We still have half of our binoculars left, so we've only sacrificed half of our vision. It looks like I can cut this off on the sides of this bridge on this side and the focus and all will still work on this. So we've taken binoculars and turned it into a single field of vision. Uh, I did take that center piece right here and there were two look like little dinky leaf springs, retaining clips. And I pulled them out and within that housing were these two triangles. And they definitely have some magnification and being in that shape and the way they are, I don't know if they'll be good for uh, fire starting or not, but I'm going to retain those. We have our little dime size, our quarter size, and then our large size magnifying glass. And uh, looks like the storms are back gone. I can see the sun coming out on the other side of the river. If it comes this way and we're able to, we'll fix us up a little tender bundle and go outside and see if these will work.
All right, so until then, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, well, it's three days later and we came out. We got a nice sunshiny afternoon and we're gonna see how this, uh, the parts of our binoculars we took apart work. So let me get up here a little bit where hopefully you and I can see. We'll use our big glass, get that focused on my hand, put it right there on the char cloth. See if I can get that foot. Well, it's already burning. <laughs> So the, uh, well, that was two pieces. <laughs> Got them burning all the way through. All right, so throw that in the fire pit. Ouch. Getting a little warmish. Cover that up. And uh, see if we can't just get one piece this time. And we'll go to the medium glass. This one is about the size of a quarter find the uh, spot on my hand again there it is come over here get focused down trying to find that small point waiting for smoke and it's there so it created a smaller spot smaller glass but uh, once again good fire so that's the keeper Cover that one up, throw this piece in the fire pit. And let's go to the last one. Now this one is only about the size of a, of a dime. And I don't know if this one's gonna have enough to give us any ump or not, but we'll get it focused in, get that small dot. I don't know, my hand's in the way. Let's hold it down here. Focus it in, camera, get that small dot going, just like, up oh, there we go, trying to hold it still, waiting for smoke, and once again, okay, so out of that pair of binoculars, we wound up with three good burning lenses. Once again, the large one, about the size of the palm of my hand. One, about the size of a quarter. And one, about the size of a dime. So we'll take these and add them to our kits. And uh, we'll have another way of starting fires. Now, a lot of people like to use magnifying lens or burning lenses when they go out because it never wears out. So if you protect it, and I just made a little small leather pouch for this one, and I'll find a round tin like we use to keep some of our fire kits and all in, and that way it doesn't get scratched up, banged up, and chipped up. And I'll add that to my fire making kit. And the reason we like to use these magnifying lenses is because as long as you don't break that lens and as long as you've got sun, it should last you a lifetime. You don't have to worry about it wear, uh, running out of fluid like a big lighter. and You don't have to worry about uh, it wearing away like your flint and steel. So it's a good viable resource uh, many days of the year and I'll look forward to uh, shooting some videos in the future and utilizing these. But until then, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. Until next time, God bless.